Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the Hot Flash Chronicles. I am Amelia Lady B, and I am so happy that you came back to my channel. If it's your first time visiting me, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Don't forget to click on the notification bell to know when I post another video. Listen, today's video is good. It actually was inspired by a post that I saw um, on Instagram by um, a doctor who actually specializes in endometriosis. The name of his handle is New York Endometriosis Center. So it's all about the Lupron Depot shot. Yeah. So stay tuned because I am going to give you some really good information to help you make a decision if you've ever decided to be on Lupron or even this new drug called Oralissa. Stay tuned. I'm back. All right, so Lupron Depo Shot. The Lupron Depo Shot is a sex hormone suppressor. Um, it's used to treat well, temporary relief of pain for those who are suffering from endometriosis, from fibroids, um, and also to treat premature puberty. It is considered a chemotherapy drug. <laughs> It's considered a chemotherapy drug. It's harmful to cancerous cells as well as non-cancerous cells. Problem. Before I finish and get started, get digging into this, um, just to note, I am not a physician. Um, anything that I say during this video or any of my videos, please consult with your doctor, your physician before you decide to make a decision. And also do your own research. All this stuff I'm gonna tell you today, I got from Google and some of it is from my own personal experience. So please, again, do your research, consult your doctor. But this is just, I had to share this information because this is stuff that I did not know because I, was on the Lupron Depot shot multiple times. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to 2000 and I'm gonna say, I think it was 2012 when I had my very first surgery. Um, I had a cyst removed and some endometriosis tissue. This was the first time that I was, this is when I was diagnosed first diagnosed with endometriosis. And so after my surgery, my doctor told me that I was going to be going on a treatment called the Lupron Depo shot. He told me, he informed me that the shot was going to um, stop my period so that my body would be able to heal, take the time to heal after the surgery. So I wouldn't have my period and so the endo won't kind of be reactive because endometriosis kind of feeds off of your menstrual. So when you're on your menstrual, endo, it like it flares up and it begins to grow and <laughs> ravage through your body and all that jazz. Okay. So after my surgery, he told me this, this is what it does. He says, um, it has a few side effects, it has a few side effects and but the main one, you might go into menopause. Like a, you might have menopausal experiences such as hot flashes. So you might experience some of that. So I'm like, okay. And lo and behold, I'm going to say after my second shot, I began to have hot flashes. So really, that's pretty much all that I experienced from the depot shot then, the Lupron shot then. Okay, so I moving forward to 2000. No, I'm sorry, that was 
my first when I got diagnosed that was 2000 and two, 2003 that's when it was I'm sorry now move forward to 2012 so 2012 so in 2012 I had my second surgery when I I was in Jacksonville for my first surgery I came back home um, to start my master's degree and I found my doctor it's a whole long story if you want to catch up about my story with endometriosis you can watch a few videos back so in 2012 when I met my current doctor um, who is amazing I love him it's just that I wish I had known a lot more information about the Lupron Deborah shot so 2012 I had another surgery again related to endometriosis after my surgery my doctor said um, I want to put you on the Lupron Depo shot. I'm like, yeah, I heard of it. I actually was on it um, some years back. So he's like, okay. He says, so you're going to experience some some possible menopausal um, symptoms. And that's really what I hear mostly from my patients, menopausal symptoms. So again, had the Lupron Depo shot. Um, just to kind of track back, I had it six months the first time. So this time you... The longest you should be able, you should take it is six months. So it's six shots. So I took it for six months the second time, 2012, for the second time um, after that surgery. So during this six month um, period, all I felt was the hot flashes. I did too. Now that I think about it, when after I after reading the side effects of it, um, at that time in 2012, I kind of felt a little sluggish. Um, but that's but mostly it was the hot flashes that I experienced from it. Now I know some of you may be saying, "Well, why didn't you research the drug yourself?" Blah blah blah. Okay, we're gonna go back to 2002, 2000. Whenever that was, I had my surgery. I'm going to say it was like 2002, 2003, my first surgery. Access to the internet wasn't all that great. Yeah, I was in college and we had school. We had computers at the school, but it, it wasn't readily at your hand. You know, we didn't have the nice phones that we have now. So, um, and I really didn't think about researching it because... You kind of look to your doctor and now I know that we shouldn't ever do that. We look to our doctors and you think, okay, they're telling me something that's good for me. He's saying that this is going to help my help me, help my pain, help my body to heal. So, you know, I was thinking it's helping my body to heal. So in 2012, when my doctor told me the same thing. I was like, yeah, I was on that. You know, I experienced some hot flashes. I'll be good. I'll be okay. Okay, fine, dandy. So, um, when I went in, I'm going to say maybe the third or fourth shot, I went in to get the shot and the nurse, she was like, um, hon, how you feeling? I said, you know, it's just the hot flashes with this shot. And she says, are you one, are you, uh, taking vitamins, right? I was like, yeah, I'm taking like regular, uh, multivitamin. She says, no, honey, you need to take extra calcium because what this is doing to your body it can potentially she was like it could potentially um you could lose bone bone mass you need to be taking extra calcium say what now okay all right got it went to the store hopped up on my calcium right this was 2012. Yes, again, again. All right, again. In 2014, I had another surgery. And um, after the surgery, got back on to Lupron. This round of Lupron was a little bit different. It did a lot more to my body. Um, yes, back to the hot flashes. I immediately hopped up on my my calcium one morning no lie one morning I woke up and it was like <clears throat> excuse me 
it was like I couldn't move. It's like my body was so stiff and it was in pain. I was like in pain. I felt pain throughout my muscles, my arms. I felt pain in my muscles and my arms and my legs and my back. And I just started crying. I literally woke up crying. I was supposed to be getting up for work. The alarm goes off and I'm like, what? I can't move. And I'm just like crying. I call my supervisor, tell her that I was not coming into work that day. I don't know what's going on. I need to call my doctor. So I call my sister-in-law. After I hung up the phone with my supervisor. I call my sister-in-law and I'm like crying. And she's like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with me. My body, I'm aching. I said, I can't move. I don't know what. I don't know what's what's going on in my body. So at the time I was living alone in my apartment and um she was like i'm coming over so um she does not have a key i didn't get a key made for her so i was like shoot so i'm gonna have to try to move so i i pushed myself out of the bed and i went to the door and just unlocked the door and i kind of walked back to the room and i laid back down again and i had a heating pad so i cut the heating pad on and um i hadn't eaten I don't know if I grabbed something. I think I actually just took the Advil. I took about 800 milligrams of the Advil. I knew I shouldn't have because I didn't eat. I didn't grab anything. So when my sister came, sister-in-law came into the house, she got me some some toast and I ate it, got something and um got something to drink. I had like a bottle of water or something on my bed there anyway because again, I'm experiencing the hot flashes, so I always had a bottle of water next to my bed. So um, I had that. I called the doctor. She was like, you need to call the doctor's office. So I called the doctor's office and um, talked to the girl. She was like, oh, yeah, that is um, it's a symptom of the Lupron because I'm telling her I'm on the Lupron. And she's like, yes, that is something that you experience from the Lupron. She's like, take some um, pain medication. She's like, if it gets worse, call back and let us know. Okay. The pain didn't get, it didn't get worse, but I knew that it was a side effect. So that was something that I just had to look out for. And so I just, I just rolled with it. Right. So moving forward to today, the reason why I made this video is because I, I got really pissed off when I saw the doctor who posted the, he posted like this list of Lupron side effects and what it really is. And I'm just hearing so many stories about it, right? And I'm just like, wow, this explains so much. It also talked about depression, talks about depression, it talks about dizziness. In fact, let me read to you some of the um, side effects to Lupron. Dizziness and headache, sweating and hot flashes, depression and moodiness. Yeast infections in women, swelling, by the way, this drug can be given to men um, for their prostate, weight loss or weight gain, general pain, including sore breasts and te or testicles, restlessness, itching and peeling of skin, breast development in men, abnormal sensations in fingers and toes, weakness and lack of muscle strength. Changes in sexual de desire. Um, and then it says serious side effects. As if none of that other stuff was serious. Severe depression including su suicidal thoughts. Seizures. In men with prostate cancer, it may cause diabetes, urinary tract blockage, stroke, and sudden death. Heart rhythm changes. Liver damage. Decrease in bone mass and an increase in osteoporosis risk. Rare side effects. Nausea. Inability to control bowel movements. Usually dark urine. Itching. Okay. See the problem that we have with all of these medications? And it's not just Lupron, okay? Let's not just, it's not just Lupron. I mean, it's every other medication that we're on. 
But I feel like for us women who are going through endometriosis, PCOS, fibroids, we are already going through so much in our lives. We're experiencing pain beyond any measurable level that you can think of. You know, I have heard people, I'm not a mother, I do not have children, but I have heard women with endo say that this pain is even worse than them giving birth to their child. So we have to go through so much and then to inject us with this chemical who you what you say, well, it's going to help. It's going to stop your body and cool down the endometriosis. You know, these are just words that I've heard randomly. You know, it's going to cool down the endometriosis. It's going to help you heal. Well, while it's helping me so-called heal, it's actually causing other things to develop in my body. And even though you're only to use it the six months, like that's the longest you should use it, is for six months. In six months, that thing does that much damage. Depression. Severe depression or suicidal thoughts. Seriously? This is what you're putting into my body? Yes, I will say I will take fault in not doing extensive research. But again, you have to understand when you're in so much pain and you have somebody to say this can help you, you you know, I went through such a long track of finding a doctor that I finally found the right doctor who believed what I even said and believed my symptoms and didn't tell me that I was crazy or that I was over exaggerating my symptoms. He really understood and listened to me. And so, of course, I'm going to, you know... He tells me, take this, and it'll be, you know, this, 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 this. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, at this point, let's go for it. Now, never again will I do that. But this is what happens when you are kind of alone. Because during this process, I really didn't have anybody going to my appointments with me, you know, I didn't have anybody to really talk to about this kind of stuff. So it was kind of me on my own. And like, it was like on a very emotional process for me because I wanted to have kids and I was trying to preserve um, my ovaries and everything, my uterus, you know, get it all cleaned up. I, that was, you know, my goal with my doctor. And so... It was like, now I'm inching to the road to being able to conceive, to have children. And so that was my process and really wasn't thinking about side effects and stuff. It was just in the joy of having to having someone that believed in, in me and, you know, to help me get to that next stage. But, you know, you live, you learn. You know, I'll never have to see Lupron again. Um, never have to see that again. <laughs> we're, we're, I'm, I'm praying and hoping I'll never have to see that. You know, well, I won't, even if I won't even, you know, I haven't had any experience with endo since my hysterectomy. So I'm all clear, went to the doctor. I'm all clear. Um, I'm doing good. But I wanted to share this information about the Lupron Deborah shot because <sighs> there are women who are being asked to go on it. You know, their doctor is suggesting them to go on the Lupron. And so it's a bit, very big decision. Um, it's a medication that can riddle your body of a lot of pain and cause damage. And so you need to be aware of this. Now, I did say I would discuss a little bit about Orlissa. So Orlissa is a new drug that is being advertised on television that says to help with the mild or moderate endometriosis pain. So um, I have a cousin, um, my younger, a younger cousin who has endometriosis. And so she texted me one night and she's asked me about Orlissa 
Now, mind you, I hadn't seen the commercial, so I was like, who is Oralissa? <laughs> and she laughed. She laughing emoji. She's like, it's not a who, it's a drug. And I'm like, oh, okay, I've never heard of or Oralissa. So I go Google it or whatnot. So I decided to go on to my Instagram page, Millennial and Menopause, and do a post that says, hey, if anybody heard of Oralissa, anybody taking Oralissa, tell me about it. And the comments went bananas. My inbox went bananas. Don't take it. I had people, I had, it was everywhere from, don't take it, I've taken it. Um, it, it, um, uh, my body is like, I'm in pain, it's horrible, to, I'm on it now, not, I'm thinking about getting off of it. Um, I'm on it, it's helping me. Um, but then I get the comment of, it's just like Lupron, it's just in a pill form. So instead of the shot, or Alyssa is in pill form. And again, you're only taking it for a certain period of time. It's not something that it's an ongoing thing. So I text my cousin back and I'm like, you're not going on that. Okay? Because it's just like the Lupron. So... That being said, Orlissa is something similar to the Lupron shot, just in pill form. Again, I am not a physician. I do think that um, you should take the time to research whatever your doctor suggests is that you go on. I know this journey is so difficult with whatever you're going through, whether it be whatever issue that you're having reproductively I know it is a struggle and I know that we're trying to find relief and so it's like when a doctor says take this it's gonna help with this 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 and we're thinking yes finally I there's something that can help me I really encourage you to really do your research Google read some research articles um, get in contact with other physicians who you know, hear the pros and cons to everything before you decide to do something from your body, for your in, to put into your body. I know that all of us are different. I know that every woman is different because it comes, that's the same thing as it comes down to me taking hormone therapy. You know, the decision, do I take hormone therapy or do I not take hormone therapy? Every woman is different. Every woman has her own background, his, history, um, her own medical history, her own family history. And so that plays a role into everything. So ladies, I just encourage you to really have a conversation with your doctors, really do your own research and make the decision for yourself. But the doctor can't force you to do anything. But when it comes to your so when it comes to your body, I just really encourage you to research the medications before your doctor puts an order or prescription in. It's okay to say, can I take a couple days? I want to do some research and then I'll call the office and get back to you before you put in the order for the Lupron or put in the order for the Oralissa or what other whatever other drug that I'm sorry. <laughs> all right let's do that again <laughs> so i encourage you to talk to your doctor and to see um before he puts you on a drug before he calls it in calls in the prescription whatever it may be um and talk to them about your next steps and what you can do um Look at changing your diet when it comes to pain for endometriosis. Um, I talk a lot about that too. I'm well, I will be getting more into that when it comes to wellness and eating. Yes, I am millennial and menopause, that's what my page is, and I talk about surgical menopause. But also, because I've had endometriosis and because it very well could come back, I mean. As you know, or if you don't know, a hysterectomy is not a cure for endometriosis. It's just not. So we have to take care of our bodies. And so whether it be PCOS, whether it be fibroids, whether it be cancer, whether it be endometriosis, we have to really 
be vigilant and trying to find other ways outside of medication sometimes to help us manage our pain. You know, so it might be health, um, wellness wise what we eat, what we're ingesting into our bodies. Because again, you have these chemicals. Not that food doesn't have chemicals. <sighs> There's so much. But people find a lot of different um, ways of managing their pain outside of the chemicals and drugs. So that's all I got. I really hope this video was helpful to someone whether you're currently taking Lupron, currently taking Orlissa, or you've been presented with the option to take those drugs. I really hope that um, I was able to shed some light on some things. You could do your own Google searches. You could do your own research searches, like go and look at um, other medical, medical research um, studies and things like that about the drugs and you just decide from there take care of yourself ladies so that's it thank you for tuning in to the hot flash chronicles don't forget to check me out on instagram at millennial and menopause visit my website millennial and menopause.com and don't forget to subscribe to my channel i'll be back with another episode of the Hot Flash Chronicles. God bless.